Amém. Glória a Jesus. Aleluia. 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 Glória a Deus. Aleluia. Very good. Peace to the Lord, my brethren. And also to the ones who are watching us and visiting us, peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite those who can to stand up at this moment. I'm going to open the Word of God in the book of Luke. Luke 24. The disciples were on the Amos. I'm going to read a couple of verses. I'd like to ask the brethren to pay attention to a couple of expressions that we're going to read. On chapter 20, 24 of Luke, we're going to read from verse 14. Amen. Thus says the word of God. Luke 24. 14. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversations is that that you have with one another as you walk and are sad. Then the one whose name was Cleophas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened this in these days in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all people, and who the chief princes and our rulers delivered him to, to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he was he would... He, now, let's go to verse 28. It says the following. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther, but they cons constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he broke bread, and after that he vanished. Lord, we ask that your word may once again come towards each life in the service and towards our heart on each service and we ask that your spirit may speak to our hearts and have the understanding and the revelation of your word. We are really thank you for your pray for the praises and for the blessing that fills our heart. In the name of Jesus, Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, as we have seen have spoken a lot regarding the meanings that Jesus had with man, or actually the meanings that man had with Jesus. And one thing that calls my attention greatly, and we have, have been already on the fifth uh, of those meetings, and that in each time where there is this meeting, Every time that Jesus meets with man, he goes towards man, the life of that person is transformed completely. He turned their lives 180 degrees. And we see that Jesus meets during his ministry all types of people, rich, poor, prince of the temple, captain of the army, and in Jericho, for example, Jesus spoke with Zacchaeus, come down quickly. And with the blind man, he says, get up. Why is that? Because for Jesus, there is no difference. The soul is the same. He's not interested in our bank account or who you are and how much you have. He levels up. 
Why is that? Because for Jesus, the most important is that we say, look, I have been washed from the blood of Jesus. I am a new creation. And here, these two men, in yet another meeting, the text says that, as we have said, well, as we know after all the things that had already happened with Jesus, they leave Jerusalem towards their house. And I just wanted to say something, my brethren. This was not one thing that only these two did. And at the end of, of the book of John, the word says that Peter and the others, they also went back to their old ways. Peter said, I'm going to go back to fishing. So no one is immune to, to this. But it is interesting that those men, they were having a conversation regarding all of this. And the text uses an interesting expression because it says the following. While those men were having a conversation, the same Jesus came to them. Just like to open a parenthesis here and say the following. Jesus is the same. I change. Today I have an opinion, tomorrow I have another. Today I think one way, tomorrow I th change. But Jesus is the same. Yes, it's today and until the day he returns. And John, he says something interesting in Revelation because he says the following. He was in the island of Patmos and says, I heard a voice, like a voice that sounded trumpets, like that first voice. So in other words, so, many, so much time had already passed from that first experience of John until that moment in the island of Patmos. And you can imagine everything that he had gone through. But he had not forgotten their first voice had spoken with him. You know why? Because the one who had spoken to him, that voice belonged to the same person, Jesus. And how many times we come to the house of the Lord, we participate on the services, and that first voice, it speaks to us in the same way it has speaking. It is speaking with us during the praises. And I already spoken to the sister during the praise. Why? I don't, I don't I forget this because the first voice I spoke to us today, yesterday, is going to speak tomorrow. That voice belongs to the same person. Jesus is immutable. He never changed. But those men, they did not recognize him. The word says that Jesus asked them the following. What are you talking about and why are you sad? But the text doesn't say in any moment, does not mention that those men were sad. Through the tone of the conversation, they were even frustrated because of what they thought did not happen. But Jesus asks a question. Why are you sad? So I look to the brethren here and I don't know what is going through with you. We can see a couple of brethren through Zoom, but we don't know what they are going through. But Jesus knows. At this moment, you who came here, you are watching us. I'm going to say once again, I don't know what you're going through, but Jesus is beside you saying, Why are you sad? What is your pain? What is your difficulty? Because he knows. And those two men, their pain was the pain of the soul. But I want to say once again, they did not know Jesus. And the proof to this is that in the following verses, they, they say, Look, don't you know what happened? Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus was not of Nazareth. He was a Billimite. He was from Bethlehem. He was born in Bethlehem because there, there was a miracle there. Jesus was in Nazareth. He did not pray in any miracle. Interesting, isn't it? Nazareth was a, a city that was discriminated. Nathaniel says, can anything good come from Nazareth? Is anything worthwhile in Nazareth? And then they say, look, Jesus Nazareth, good person, a prophet, mighty indeed, and words. But he was Jesus of Nazareth, a Jesus that could not do anything. 
and they would like that Jesus was the one to redeem Israel, he, that he would come to remove the yoke that Rome had placed on onto that people. And they thought that Jesus was going to come as, a, as the Messiah. He was causing some sort of rebellion and an army, lead an army that would fight against Rome. My brethren, Jesus did not come. Jesus did not leave his eternity, the comfort of his eternity. Jesus is the King of glory. He owns everything. He did not leave his glory in order to for simply to deliver people from a yoke of slavery or domination. Jesus, uh, bringing to our days, didn't he did not leave his glory simply to open a door of a new job or to heal you or to save a, a loved one. Does he have power? Of course. But he came to do way more than that. He came to take your life and my life of a situation of sin and bring us to eternity. If we open a new job, give me a new job, I don't know. If I had to go through financial problems or the brother or sister go through financial problem throughout your life when we come in eternity we will walk on streets of gold if you are not careful you're going to trip on gold you're going to live in heavenly dwellings but if God does not operate a miracle in my life or, or on on the hill someone in my family in, in the eternity our body will be transformed and Jesus came for this but they did not know Jesus and this expression, knowing, has a difference in knowing and recognizing. When you do not recognize someone, it's because that person changed. changed. Hey, I did not recognize Ronald Oh, because he has grown, or because his hair is bigger, or he grow, grew a beard, or he got uh, lost weight. Or, but when you don't, no, is because you do not give the proper worth to it. Jesus, Jesus is the same. Those men did not know Jesus. They never knew Jesus. And then at the end, at the end of the text, the word says that they asked Jesus to stay with them. And Jesus does something very simple in their house. He breaks the bread. And in the previous chapters in Luke, when Jesus was participating on the last sup supper of Passover, before going to the cross, he breaks the bread and he says, This is my body that is given to you, for you. And when Jesus does this act, the man, those two men recognize him, because men only recognize Jesus, men only, not recognize, uh, they, they only know Jesus truly when they understand what Jesus did for their lives. And we came here tonight, our hearts are thankful, our lips have a praise, a song of praise to the Lord, because one day we knew and understood what Jesus did for us on that cross. And when those men, they understand that, they say, oh, wow. He was Jesus. Jesus is alive. My brother and sister, what I have to say to you is that Jesus is alive. Jesus overcame death. And he did all of this, left his glory, all of it. Because he loved us. And the love of Jesus does not ask anything in return. Jesus loves men, and that's it. He doesn't ask does not ask anything in exchange. We remain in the presence of the Lord because we have gratitude. We remain in the presence of the Lord because we love Him. But we love Him because He loved us first. Our love is conditional. Before we even paid attention to Jesus, he was already looking to us with mercy in his eyes. And my brethren, 
those men, they finally knew Jesus. And tonight, I don't know your situation, situation of anyone here, but I can say one thing. You will know Jesus tonight. His, his role he has already performed. He's here. He already paid the price. You don't need to give anything to him. You don't need to do anything. You just need to accept him. Only understand that this love is unconditional. That he loves us without asking anything back. If you came here to ask for a blessing, your blessing will come. You who came here in need of a miracle, your miracle will come because Jesus is powerful and he is the owner and king of all things. We are going to glorify the Lord with this song. The great love of our Lord. The king of the entire world. He is the king of a country, of a nation. No, he is the king of the whole universe. And you will adore the Lord with gratitude. You will glorify the Lord. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This song, it is, it summarizes everything that Jesus is for us. He's the king of the universe. One day he looked to us. One day he took us out of the lake of uh, mud and put our feet on the rock. And he's the strong rock and the safe refuge. He's the God I, I am, the great I am. Don't stop, otherwise we're going to stay here all night. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord has shown in a vision a woman that who entered here tonight and uh, and actually that is in the service here tonight and she has literally we're going to read the, the spiritual gift literally but it is a, a spiritual situation she has her bone backbone hurt and her leg is broken and because she was not able to walk she was put on a stretcher and she was placed inside of an ambulance but instead of this ambulance going to the hospital to bring her to the hospital, the ambulance would stop here in front of the church and leave her here. And she would enter on a stretcher. And she was brought here. The service began and she was in this situation. But now the service is, is coming to, a, to an end and she was already walking. It, it is a, she's a woman, the, uh, broken leg means that she can't walk, problem on the backbone, speaks of the sustenance of the body, support of the body. She needs a blessing with the doctrine. But I was already here meditating on the spiritual gift. Came a text to my mind. Because I kept asking myself, why did she, didn't she go to a hospital? She went actually to a church. The difference is the following. The hospital, when you when you get better, the God releases you and then you go home. Here in church, Jesus is not going to push you out. You want to remain there. as long as you want to impress the Lord, you will stay. Jesus will never reject you. You, me and how small I am, man, yes. But Jesus will never deny you. You, my sister, and it is valid to each one here who is going through difficulty. You came to the right place. It's not simply a hospital. As I said, in a hospital, when you get better, the hospital sends you home. Well, because there is another to enter, but not in here. Here is the house of the Lord. There are many dwellings. We well, invite the church to stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, glorify. Because one day you took us out of the darkness. It brought us to a light. The light that lights up our steps, Lord. And you never allow us to go back to the darkness because you are a good, uh, love, a blessed, uh, loving God. And you love your servants. That's why you adore you, Lord. You glorify for this word because once more and more you strengthen us, Lord. That's why we praise you and adore you, Lord, with all our heart, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glorify the Lord. Adore the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Only the Lord is God. Amen, Lord.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, we glorify your name, Lord. For this rescue. Because one day we met this true Jesus. Amongst many, you called us. We praise you for this opportunity, this blessing, this privilege. We thank you because we are here. We thank you because we have the anointing and the opportunity to offer you our praise, our gratitude, because you are God for everything that you are for us. And now accept this service. Send us home. Send us back home to our own duties. Protect us, Lord. Continue blessing each life, each family participating in the service. Lord, we praise you. Really thankful in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. We are bringing the service to a close. We have a need, an assistance, a prayer. We are here ready to help the brethren, to pray, to assist the brethren. In the same way, in on Zoom, the deacons and ushers that are participating on Zoom, they can take the lead and we are, they are going to be on help, helping the ones who are on Zoom. Now reminding the Sunday school and in the morning from YouTube and ourselves at 7.30 on group, on group B and to all the peace of the Lord.